According to the Master Builders Association of South Australia, only 3% of the people out there on the tools in the construction industry are women. Amanda Hewer never even thought about becoming a tradie when she was at school, but now the electrician is on a mission to get more girls into the industry. Reporter Carolyn Horn has this story. I went to a, an independent all-girls school where the focus was very much higher education. So I went to university, realised quite quickly that it wasn't for me um, and deferred my second year and started travelling. But Amanda never went back to that university place. She had a conversation with a friend who said, I don't want to work in an office anymore. I don't enjoy this. I want to be a tradie. Why can't we do it? And that set her on the path to becoming an electrician. Thinking about it now, I was probably pretty brave to have done it because I was the only female on all the sites that I was in at trade school. But my field officers there, the trainers really supported me and guided me through that. Amanda now promotes the industry to students as part of her role with the Born to Build program. Unfortunately, there's still some people with that common misconception that girls aren't cut out for work in this industry. I'd met this fella, the residential plumber, called Barry. His name's not really Barry. And he was telling me about what he would want to see from uh, a referral from Born to Build. And it was all about, you know, he's got to do this and he's got to fit in with the boys and he's got to be good at sport because all my boys that I've got at the moment are into sport. And so I said, look, I'm noticing a common theme here. Can I just confirm that you'd be willing to receive some applicants that might be female? And it got very awkward. Barry said, look, we've tried girls in the past and it's just not a good fit for our company. They just don't fit in, which is super frustrating. I've had to deal with people like this over, over the last 18 years. I did kind of say to Barry, if you give an opportunity to someone and let them prove to you whether they're cut out for it or not, then you might be really surprised. But Amanda says things are changing. A lot of employers who hadn't considered females, who then get an applicant, take them on for work experience, they're usually really surprised and they often say, I don't know why I didn't try this before. I should have tried this a lot sooner, which is really cool feedback to get. It's a little bit frustrating because, you know, it's 2024. And it's been slow to change. <laughs> Definitely. If people can be talking about the good stuff that happens, we've got so many people in this industry who are supportive of females in construction. They're proving that females are here, that we do exist and we are absolutely smashing it. And I think the feel good stories obviously help you know, they're success stories, you know, and, and people, applicants are driven to join the industry so that they can be a part of the action and employers are willing then to be open-minded to increase their workforce and have a really dynamic, diverse workforce that are absolutely smashing it and kicking ass in this industry. If you go to school, whether you go to a private girls' school or you're going, you know, to a technical high school, what would you say to those girls sitting there, you know, year 11 and 12 going, I don't know what I'm going to do next year. I'd say go and do some work experience and work out what it looks like. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What is it, you know, if you're in amongst it, then you'll know pretty quick whether this is the industry for you. One person who thinks the industry is for her is Elizabeth Briggs. She's a third year bricklaying apprentice, building houses for the rapidly growing population of South Australia's Flurio Peninsula. It's definitely a lot. Like I'm very into the gym, so... I've been weightlifting for probably five years before I started, so that kind of helped me. But yeah, it was definitely a very rude shock to the system. It takes a while to, you know, build up into it. And almost two decades after Amanda picked up her first multimeter as an apprentice electrician, Elizabeth is in the same position as the only woman on site and in her trade classes. So we'd love to see more women, like it'd be nice to have some other female students, but the boys are really nice and, you know, I catch up with them outside of trade school and good friendship. Kalani Bates took up an apprenticeship as a carpenter after finishing as ducks of her Year 12 class. Like Elizabeth, she's had the experience of being the only woman on site but says it's never been an issue. I grew up playing footy with boys, so um, it's not new to me just being one of the only girls, but they didn't treat me any differently to how they treat any of the other employees. And so I felt like I was always welcomed and they were super patient with me and I was never getting jobs that, you know, the other boys wouldn't get anyway. So, yeah, I was treated extremely fairly and I loved it. According to Kalani, there's only one real drawback out on site. Probably the one thing that I did not like about the job. I adored everything else, but the toilets were pretty rank. And I think you get that on any building site, save it for the cafe break, really. <laughs> that story from Carolyn Horn.